The Six Day War, you said, was a provo an Israeli provocation. Yes. Um, how, to call it an Israeli provocation would be the same as, uh, well, you know that they closed the, uh, the, the Straits of Tehran. <coughs> the, I'm sorry, the Gulf of Aqaba? Straits Strait of Tehran is what you're looking for. Uh, yes. The, the Gulf of Aqaba mm -hmm. to shipping, the Red Sea, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Egyptians closed the Suez Canal to Israeli shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, seven or eight armies were amassing, uh, led by Nasser. The uh, Jordanians, the Jordanian army was given over to Egyptian control. They were um, indicating to the masses who were dancing in the streets with, in jubilation when, when Nasser made statements that they were going to kill every Jew, drive them into the sea. The problem is, is that that particular history is not true. The closing of the... Let the, the, the statement. Okay, fair enough. I was going to have to sort of get to the answer. Yeah. So to say that Israel provoked, provoked that war mm -hmm. would be similar to saying that the West provoked the Second World War because Hitler did not declare war on the West. He marched into Poland and the West declared war on Germany. So we could say, along with this, using the same reasoning, that uh, the West was provoked Hitler into a world war. I'm sorry, that analogy doesn't work. Um, and the reason I can say that is I have the words of the Israeli generals who fought that war. Menachem Begin, in 1982, quoted, said in the New York Times, um, the Egyptian army's concentrations in the Sinai did not prove that Nasser was really ready to attack us. We must be honest with ourselves. We decided to attack him. Moreover, Morshi Dayan stated also that he made repeated, Israel made repeated border provocations against Syria in the north. And at the time, Syria and Egypt had a mutual defense pact that if one were attacked, the other were attacked. Well, they would come to his defense. Uh, let me go to, uh, so I could, to, to Levi Eshkol, Prime Minister, denied that Nasser had any offensive intent. On October 18, 18, 1967, he told the Israeli newspaper Yediyat Aharonat, the Egyptian layout in the Sinai and the general military buildup there testified it to a military defensive operation. Moreover, Nasser, 100,000 of Nasser's best troops were bogged down in a war in Yemen. He had neither the manpower nor the artillery. Which he, which he then transported into the Sinai. No, he did not. And no, I'm sorry, sir. To say that, that Israel is running the United States is, is beyond uh, idiocy. Well, I'm afraid, sir, unlike you, I have some evidence to back up what I say. What I find you to be, Greg Felton, is an anti-Semite, a Jew baiter, a uh, Jew baiter. Many of your comments I find you know extremely no offensive. Cameras. And I am and I find yeah, also right your theory right that yeah. there is a Jewish plot against Shut America up. to be absolutely ridiculous. Okay. You have no validity, okay. you have We're no validity whatsoever. Now I would like to read, if I may, some statements by some people from 1919, I'll just take one second. On March, 19, March 4th, 1919, Congressman Julius Kahn presented Woodrow Wilson with a letter from three prominent Jewish Americans. They were Henry Berkowitz of Philadelphia, Max Senior of Cincinnati, and Professor Morris Jastrow of the University of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It read in part, we raise our voices in warning and protest against the demand of the Zionists for the reorganization of the Jews as a national unit, to whom now we're in the future territorial sovereignty in Palestine shall be committed. And this demand not only misrepresents the trend of the history of the Jews, who ceased to be a nation 2,000 years ago, but involves the limitation and possible annulment of the larger claims of Jews for full citizenship and human rights in all lands in which those rights are not yet secure. We ask that Palestine be constituted as a free and independent state, to be governed under a democratic form of government, recognizing no distinctions of creed, race, or ethnic descent, and with adequate power to protect the country against oppression of any kind. We do not wish to see Palestine either now or at any time in the future organized as a Jewish state. And that is the voice of American Jewry in 1919. Flash forward now to March. 1933. Objection. Taking too long. He's not yeah. answering the question. Yeah, but I want to. You're in charge, Mr. Wendy. Not yeah. here. I want to. This this comes two months after Adolf Hitler seized power in Nazi Germany. 
The speaker here is Rabbi Joachim Prince. Our acknowledgement of, German, of Jewish nationality provides for a clear and sincere relationship to the German people and its national and racial realities. Precisely because we do not wish to falsify these fundamentals, because we too are against mixed marriage and are for maintaining the purity of the Jewish group. The realization of Zionism could only be hurt by resentment of Jews abroad against the German development. Boycott propaganda, such as currently being carried on in Germany, in many ways is in essence un-Zionist because Zionism wants not to do battle, but to convince and to build. Our observations presented herewith, and this is from the Zionist Association for Germany, rest on the conviction that in solving the Jewish problem, according to its own lights, the German government, that's Hitler's government, will have the full understanding for a candid and clear Jewish posture that harmonizes with the interests of the state. It is my position that there is a fundamental distinction between a Jew and a Zionist. They are not equivalent. And it is important to state that I have never spoken ill of the people who died under Hitler. I have never spoken ill of Jews. And I should think that people who Enough, wish to honor the people who died in Hitler, Germany, should make that distinction. Because it is possible to speak honestly without being anti-Jewish. The U.S. government has a multitude of lobbyists from every sector in its nation and from every country, including from Arab and pro-Palestinian interests, as well as pro-Israel groups. Because someone disagrees with an American policy on Israel does not mean that the Jewish lobby is any more powerful than the softwood lumber lobby or the Mexican immigrants lobby. Um, Abraham Foxman has written an excellent book called The Deadliest Lies, where he says that uh, as history shows us, when people in the West are sufficiently anxious, fearful, angry, and confused, a familiar scapegoat tends to rise to the surface again and again. It is either the Jews or now the State of Israel. To say that the Jewish people do not have a right to the State of Israel, where their ancestors and their relatives have lived for thousands of years, is to say everyone in this room who is not Musqueam or Coast Salish has no right to live in Vancouver. About the, about the foundation of Israel, Israel was actually created um, quite illegally in 1948. The partition plan was never ratified by the Security Council. When Ben-Gurion declared statehood, he did it without moral, legal, or political uh, foundation. And in fact is that the partition plan had three more months to run before statehood was declared. And besides which, the UN has no authority to take land from one person and give it to another. The partition plan was on its face illegal, never ratified, and as such does not exist in international law. Israel was not, was not created legally. And that is something that can be documentedly searched out by anybody who cares to read and open his mind. I think it's really very sad, and I wish everyone would just pause for a moment. If I said something critical of India, no one would accuse me of being anti-Hindu. If I said something critical of France, no one would say I was anti-Catholic. And I criticize my own country and my own religion, which is a very small minority, Zoroastrianism. My religion, I know what it's like to be persecuted because we literally were wiped out as religion. Um, but what really... But this is what really disturbs me, it's why is it I find, and I have so many good Jewish friends, and I've always had so much respect for so many Jewish activists, what really I find very tragic is that there are many people who equate Judaism with Zionism, and if you say anything critical of Israel, you can't even say one thing critical of Israel without them literally getting on defensive. Like, do these people not ever criticize their own country? Do you never ever criticize your own country? What just concerns me is what, what you talk about Christian Zionism. And these people, if anyone is anti-Jewish, these are the people who think the Jews are going to hell. You're quite right. This is, you know, why is the Jews, well, I, I can't, I'm, I'm amazed at how many will embrace them. Now, I'll just give you an example. And then I'll may, I, may I address that quickly? We're running